Hey everyone, I am Magical Hacker, and this is episode number 5 of the Eminence Podcast, the non-CEDH Commander Podcast, where I help you in the command zone with your deck building skills, and I help you on the battlefield with your deck piloting skills. This podcast is brought to you by Tony Kelly and the rest of my patrons at patreon.com slash magicalhacker. Today's topic, chosen by Tony Kelly, is the question, what should Rule Zero mean in Commander? If you think about Commander, one of the common things people will talk about how to start a game of Commander is talking about Rule Zero. So some people, when they hear the word Rule Zero, immediately they think of, you know, what if I have a Commander that's not technically a legal Commander, but I really want to play it. I just got to double check with my opponents to make sure that it's legal. What if I want to play an unglued card, right? A card like Magical Hacker. But I want to talk, talk to my uh, my play group. Hey, is it okay if I play this this card? That might be an example of Rule Zero. But it's, it's so much more than that, right? It's not just about playing cards that aren't available for Commander. It's about playing Commander in the way that you may, it makes you happy. And it makes everybody happy. If I'm going to go play a game of basketball, and I talk to uh, some players, I say, hey, you want to come over and play some basketball? They might say, sure. But if we don't agree on where the lines are for out of bounds, we're not going to have a good time. It's going to be very frustrating for, for all of us to be playing. If I think that I'm safe, I'm not outside of the, the legal bounds for that game, but one of my opposing players thinks that I am, then we will have an argument about what's fair or not fair for that game. Same thing applies in Commander. We have to have an, uh, an idea of what is in the limits and outside the limits for that game. What is okay and what is not okay. Some people will talk about this as being the spirit of Commander. Personally, there's some kind of fluidity to that because not everybody will agree on what the spirit of commander is some people will say it's one thing some people will say it's another thing i'm sure at some point in this uh, podcast i'll talk about what i think it is but when it comes to commander everybody has their own idea of what the spirit of commander is so how in the world can we come to a commander game and everybody be happy well that's where rule zero comes into play i think rule zero should mean this before you start playing the game talk to your opponents what are things that bring you joy in your commander game? And what are things that don't bring you joy? And then if there are things that don't bring you joy, are opponents okay with being a part of a game where that isn't allowed? Or do they want to not be a part of that game? Would they rather play a game with other players who uh, aren't opposed to that? So let's give an example. Let's say I say, if for me, I don't like playing games if there's a lot of mass land destruction. Now, this isn't necessarily the case. Mass land destruction doesn't actually bother me all that much. I think it's a bit risky, but, you know, to each their own. If you want to play it, go ahead. Um, but I'm not going to say, you know, you can't play it. But let's say I was. Let's say I was a player that did not like mass land destruction. No mass land destruction at all. It just sucks all the fun out of the game for me. If I came to a, a, a table and I said, hey, guys, rule zero discussion real quick. I'm not a big fan of mass land destruction. It just makes games very unfun for me. My three opponents can have a couple of different responses, right? First of all, they can say, oh yeah, we're in the same boat. We don't like mass land destruction either, so we don't have it in any of our decks. So all of us are together, we're all playing the game. No mass land destruction is in any of our decks because none of us like mass land destruction, and so we're all avoiding it. Nobody's got it, nobody's playing it, nobody wants it, we're all happy. Second option is, you know, I don't, I don't mind it myself, but I'm also not playing it, so we can have fun together. I'm not, you know, my decks aren't going to be opposing to what you want in this game. So we can have fun there too. So that's the second category. People who are neutral, but able to comply. And then the third one is, you know what? I do have mass land destruction in my deck because I don't necessarily find it unfun. So for the mutual benefit of both of us, I will choose to find a different group to play with. Because if I choose to use this deck playing in the game with you that's going to be disrespectful of me towards you. I'm not respecting what you are looking for in a commander game. Does that mean that anytime somebody comes to a commander game, their rule zero should be respected? There actually have been some people who have been saying that's what I'm trying to say, and that's not. I think there's it's a time for discussion. If I come to the table and say, I don't like counter spells. I want to play a game with no counter spells. Then that means there's no answers to every single instant and sorcery in the game of Commander. I mean, there are some that you can answer, but that's beside the point. For for many instants and sorceries, you literally cannot stop them. They're going to have their effect. 
you can't do anything about it because there's no counter spills. In a situation like that, yeah, I think it's appropriate to say, hey, I don't think I can comply with that. I'd like to find a different table. And you're probably not going to have a lot of players who are going to want to play there. So you might even go one step farther and say, look, there's an important reason why counter spells are a, a part of the game of Commander. I think it's reasonable to think about what would be not the full desire for you, but would be close enough. And so then that player might say, you know, okay, counter spells are okay, just as long as the deck isn't just all counter spells. I played against a deck that has like 50 or 60 or 40 counter spells, and it's just, it's too much. I can't handle it. All right, that's a much better request. Rule zero, no decks that have 40 counter spells. That's simple. That's easy. Lots of people can say, oh yeah, I can play a deck without 40 counter spells, no problem. So I think we can find a we can find some common ground in a lot of cases. One of the reasons why I like this question so much from Tony Kelly and and specifically why it's maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, uh, why it is maybe the most crucial question to understand in all of Commander if you want to have fun. If you don't want to have fun, you don't have to, you don't have to know anything about this question. But if you want to have fun, why I think this is maybe, again, I don't know, the most important question, it has to do with if you cannot agree with your opponents, then you it's going to be a lot hard for a lot harder for you to have fun. And I actually have a personal example I'd, I'd, I'd want to give. Something that sucks the fun out of games for me is when there's still three or more players in the game and someone concedes. When somebody concedes in a 1v1 game, one person concedes, the other person automatically wins, right? Nobody has to play after that point. But in Commander, one player suddenly being gone from the game is a huge change in what that game is looking like. What used to be a pretty even balanced uh, battlefield, everybody has an equal chance of winning. With one person deciding to quit the game, now it's greatly favoring somebody else. This has happened to me time and time again, sometimes benefiting me, and I still don't like it, right? Somebody uh, concedes the game, now it's so much easier for me to win, I still don't like that. It just makes it so less, uh, so much less fun for me. So there have been times where I have said as part of a rule zero, hey guys, one of the things that I like in my commander games is if people don't concede unless everybody agrees, hey, that person is about to win. That person's winning the game. So if three people essentially are conceding at the same time, I'm totally okay with that. Somebody concedes and the winner has been decided. It's essentially the same way it works in 1v1. But a lot of times people... They will have they will be answered very uh, very well, right? So somebody has a very good answer to what they're doing, and now it's just easier for them to start up a new game and try again than to actually go through that game and try to build back up. And so I think that's a, uh, one of the big reasons that people do concede. And I'll probably touch on this uh, at length in a later episode. But this is why for me rule zero is so important. Out of all the things that are an option about what we can talk about, you know, not being allowed within our games. Uh, conceding is a very big, important one for me. And I'm not saying that I will only play with players who feel that way. There are times where it's like, you know what, I can go for a quick game. And even if it isn't the most balanced, I'm just here to have fun. I don't care. And then there are other times where it's like, you know, I, I want to try to optimize my deck. I want to try to have more fun and try to figure out the right way to do something or the wrong way to do something. And then People conceding just messes up with that evaluation, and so I, I prefer not to have that. Um, so that's one of the situations where conceding is or is not an important deal for me. But I do think Rule Zero does feature that as one of its two major elements. Talking about things that are currently legal, but we want to make illegal for this specific group of players that we are a part of for the benefit of the entire group. I think the, the one way to uh, take advantage of this and, and to be what I would say a very disrespectful player uh, is to say, I do commit to agree to this and then choose not to. So in the case in the, uh, the case that I gave before about mass land destruction, it's like joining a group, people saying, hey, we don't want any mass land destruction. I say, okay, I am not playing any mass land destruction. And then later on in the game, I do play an Armageddon, right? And so I've got that in my deck. That would be very disrespectful to the players. Similarly, if I say, okay, I promise I won't concede, and then later on I change my mind and I concede anyways, same thing. Very disrespectful to the players who have set up that rule zero. So rule zero does contribute, it is made up, first of all, of things that are technically legal, but made illegal for that group, 
and also things that are technically illegal but made legal for that group. That was kind of the first thing that we were talking about before and probably the more common interpretation of rule zero. I've got this commander. You know, it's not technically a legal commander card. It was from a from a silver bordered set or an acorn stamped set, whatever. And and so it's not technically a legal commander or let's say it's a, it's a commander that's banned. I really want to play uh, Lurus, the red blue companion. It's Lurus, right? No, it's not Lurus. Whatever, the red blue companion, whatever the name of that card is. Uh, Lutri, that's what it was. Uh, I want to play Lutri as my commander. Technically, it's banned, but I'm playing it as a commander. I'm not trying to do anything crazy with it. I just really like otters, and I want to play an otter as my commander. Okay, go for it. You know, that's a rule zero. Something that's technically illegal, but we're allowing it. We're saying that's okay, right? Another example of something like that. Hey, there's this Heroes of the Realm card. I really want to play it. Can I play this card? Again, you can talk to your playgroup. You can take that thing that's illegal and make it legal. So I give those two examples as two things that I am or am not okay with personally. It doesn't really matter what I care about, what I like. But in case you're curious, those are two things that that, that I could say yes or no to respectively. Somebody comes with a Lutri, the Spell Chaser deck. I believe that's the name of the card. They, they have Lutri as their commander. If they were to ask me, is it okay if I play this commander? I will say 100% yes. I am totally okay with it. Not a problem. On the other hand, if they play one of the Heroes of the Realms cards, and it's one in particular that says you can partner it with anything, and it's like a four-color commander, um, essentially you can just use it to add colors onto any card uh, that you want in the command zone. And for that reason, it's for me, I'm not a big fan of it because I feel like then there's no... If, if that's something that we do allow, then every deck would be just strictly better with that in the command zone with whatever else they're playing already. So to me, I I, I draw a line uh, for that one, but for most of the Re- Heroes of the Realm cards, I, I'm actually okay with them. And and that just is one particular example where I'm not. But there is something else to be, to be said here, because you might be a player who has uh, a deck like that, where you've got a commander, let's say you're playing a Nephilim, which is not technically legendary, but it's such a cool four-color creature that it's like, come on, it, it, it really should be legendary, right? That's what a lot of people say. Or maybe you're playing uh, Elbrus, the blind, the Binding Blade. It's technically a legendary equipment, not a creature, but it does flip into a legendary creature, Ormondal. So can we play that one? You know, kind of the same thing. Anytime you have a, a deck like this, I would caution you. You might find yourself in a play group that does say, hey, it is totally okay for you to play that commander. However, if you find yourself winning with that commander, they may change their mind to be saying, I can't believe you won with a commander that's not technically allowed. So while you could definitely do it, you could play a commander that's not, uh, you know, not technically legal as a commander, but talk to your play group and say, okay, they're, they're allowing it. You might still find yourself in a sticky situation later on where either you lose with it, in which case that might not feel the best for you, or you win with it, in which case it might not feel the best for your opponents. They might feel like, it wasn't a real game because you didn't real win with a real commander. So just kind of keep that in mind. That's something that I've learned along the way. Not saying that to dissuade you from trying it out. By all means, give it a shot. Try it out. Try new stuff. Try wacky stuff. It's awesome. Um, and, and definitely ask your, your play group about doing those types of things. I think you'll find more often than not, uh, they're actually okay with it. So I think it's worth trying it. Just keep that in mind. It, depending on the way the deck is built, it might be something that your opponents might be upset by. There's a, a specific strategy that I've heard of uh, multiple times, and I do think it's a good idea. Anytime you build a deck that has a commander that's not technically a legal commander, try to find another commander that would be legal for it, that has the exact same colors, but it's way more strong. Like Literally try to find the strongest commander you have for that. And I've heard people say, look, I've got two options. I can play a technically illegal commander, which is not that strong. Or I can play a technically legal commander, which is very strong. So you guys get to pick. Um, And I've heard people saying that that's a great option because sometimes you will find yourself in a play group where people are saying, no, I don't want to play against anything that's not technically legal. Great. You can have this other commander that works pretty well, too. Or there are people who say, no, no, play anything you want. And that also helps get rid of the idea of like, well, if you played that deck really well and you won the game with it, you would have probably won the game with the really strong commander too. 
So at least that makes it a little bit easier for them to to consider the the win a legitimate win, uh, which will help them have more fun as well. Especially in Commander, where seventy five percent of the time, uh, the uh, you know a player will be losing. So you you can't really be uh, expected to have fun if all you can only have fun when you're winning. You have to be able to have fun when you're losing too. So that I think is kind of my my full ideas of what rule zero should mean in Commander. Someone might be able to pull up the the actual. Uh, you know, definition of rule zero. Um, and that's, that's great. I think official rules are awesome. Um, but in my opinion, I think rule, rule zero should mean that talking about things that are technically legal, that are being made illegal for a play group in order to foster fun in that group. And then things that are technically illegal that are made legal to, again, foster fun in that group. But that's just my opinion. What are your thoughts? Do you agree with me or are you feeling like I'm missing something totally obvious? I'd love to hear your thoughts in a comment at youtube.com slash magicalhackermtg or twitter.com slash magical underscore underscore hacker. If you want to pick a topic for an episode of the Eminence podcast, check out patreon.com slash magicalhacker. Thank you again to Tony Kelly. Thank you to all of my patrons. And thank you for listening. Stay awesome, everybody. Mm -hmm.